Oh, I think this is it, guys. We're in. Right. We are live from London. All right. Um, we have got some questions from you guys. We're just going to wait. I can't see from here. I assume maybe one or two people might be joining. Um, we're going to. Al's there trying to get Ben involved. Um, hey, guys. Yeah? Is Ben there? No, Ben's not there. Okay. Well, we'll just. Uh, we haven't actually seen him for a long time. Um, so when he joins, we'll just uh, chat to him for a little bit and then we'll get to your questions. I've got some of your questions here. Um, I think Stevie will be looking at the questions that come in on the chat on his phone. Um, so yeah, we'll just wait to see if Ben... Can everyone hear Batty? I mean, they can't give us any... That's a good point, actually. I'm quite far away. We're doing a little kind of vibe. That's why I'm back here. Can you turn up the volume on your phone? Is so it? we so we can hear Ben when he comes in. Presumably, we're not just talking to our phone. There, it is live. Is it? Up? It is live. Okay. <laughs> 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 it was all quite sudden. We've never done a. You've done Insta live before. I, I haven't. All of a sudden, it's like. Did right, you? Uh, to your phone. I've I've sent a request to Ben, so we're just waiting on him. Oh, uh, okay. I see. Um, you can't really rehearse for this kind of thing because we haven't we. If we're a little bit rusty, guys, we haven't had an audience in uh, in about twelve months. Probably, well, probably longer than that. We've had confirmation that we can be heard. Great, okay, nice. That's good. That's good okay, to know. Sure. Okay, cool. Um, I wonder if I can see the the chat from here as well. I don't need to though. Do I? I don't need to. I've got the messages. Well, it says it's waiting for Ben. Okay. Oh no, unable to join. Oh dear. Try again. So today um, we have been in the studio writing new music and um, it's work so we're allowed to be doing this. I was still being... There he is! There he is! Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello mate, how you doing? Cheers. Good. Nice Cheers. to see you. Cheers. Good to Cheers. see you. Are you yeah. drinking a morning tea? Yeah. Nice. A bit early for beers for you, I suppose, isn't it? Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really see you, Ben, but I trust you're as good looking as ever. Uh, but you're quite far. We're you two, you, so. two have swapped, you two have swapped haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, me and, me and Bassy? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I just have long hair, yeah. I, uh, I chopped it off and just stuck it on with some crits there. <laughs> <laughs> and then dyed it. Dyed it. Not Where ginger. are you? Some kind of magical studio? Uh, yeah, we're in my, my, um, my living room studio in uh, North London. Um, can we turn this up a little bit? Yeah. No, yeah, it's Max. Oh, it's on the Max. It's Max. So, um, are you in LA? Yeah. Yeah. I am. How, how, are, how are things? Things are, are good and weird. Yeah, yeah. You know, like for everyone, I think. Yeah, man. What What's the situation at the moment? Are you in a lockdown or what, what's going on? I mean, we're not in a lockdown like like London is, but um, but it said it's sort of, you know, we're on our sort of California's highest alert level. So there's not, you know, there's not very much that's open. Yeah. Um, are, you, are you allowed to see your friends? Um, I mean, I've been being quite cautious about all of it, to be honest, uh -huh. quite a careful human being. But, um, uh, I think, I think there's like, I think there's like a rule of sort of no public gatherings and rules of six and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. but it was funny because we were, I was reading the other day about the, the alert level sort of going up to purple in, you know in LA County or, or whatever. And I was like, well, that, and I was reading the, the changes. I was like, well, that's not going to affect anything that I'm doing. Oh, because you're already doing it. <laughs> that's what I'm already doing it. So. Are, you, are, you allowed, are, you, are you allowed to work? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I haven't um, had much opportunity this year because there's not that much being made, but I, I was, I've been doing, I was shooting a new show for Netflix last year and we had to do some, uh, some some pickup days some reshoot days um which we did in canada so i had to fly to canada and do 14 days in a hotel room oh, wow. of, isolation, of isolation there um 
And, and then uh, is it like really different on set? It is a bit, it is a bit, it is a bit strange. Um, you feel a bit like a leper because obviously when you're actually shooting, you don't, you're not wearing a mask or, yeah. or anything like that between action and cut, but everyone has to stay a certain distance from you and people are tiered. So the camera crew who are sort of closest to you and the director, they'll have a sort of special red badge, but they have to be in like full, you know, hazmat suit and then 95 masks and all that stuff. And then if somebody needs to come in and because obviously all the different departments have their have their own, you know, specific jobs. So, for example, relighting a candle has to be done by someone in the props department who are maybe not in the don't have a red badge. And so if they want to come in and relight a candle, you literally have to leave the set. Wow, wow. Uh, so, yeah, it's a funny rules and regulations, which kind of takes some of the. Uh, yeah, it, turn, it takes some of the, the the sort of organic feel out of out of shooting. Mm -hmm. um, ban on ban on kissing scenes, I imagine. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how that works. I I know some people. I know I have one friend who's shooting a rom com and stuff, and so and and another person shoots it. Another very close friend who's shooting a drama where they definitely have have sort of intimate scenes like that. But I think they, I think they sort of have to have right, you know, sign special waivers and have special conversations with special COVID officers and things like that. What's the, what's the, what's the all program? change, all change. How does it, what about for you guys? Are, are you able to sort of rehearse and play and record and? Um, wait, first, what, what's the show? I don't think you said what the show was. Oh, it's a, it's a new fantasy show for Netflix called Shadow and Bone based on. Oh, something. right, yeah, yeah. We've got some, I, we just quickly saw some questions on that actually. Um, so yeah, which I won't be able to answer, but I, I'm very excited. Good. Why not? Why not? I'm excited that people are excited to ask them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, right now we're, we're in a lockdown, but um, they, this, this lockdown is different to the first lockdown because they basically said that uh, everyone's allowed to work. So in the music industry, everyone is kind of acting as normal in, in terms of their rehearsing and doing uh, studio sessions and doing writing sessions, still recording music and still, you know, the whole music industry is continuing. It's just- Has that, that been your focus for the main, doing, uh, doing re recording then? Because obviously you can't probably well, play- Well, this is actually the, only the second, even though, even, even though, just by what Steve said, this is only the second time we've actually met up, basically. Oh, wow. um, because yeah, I mean, we, we can, but we're all being like we've got vulnerable members of our family and stuff. So, you know, and we want to be responsible as well. So we haven't really, but it's got to the point now where we kind of have to write together. So if we're really careful beforehand, um, and we'll stay as far away from each other as possible, what we can sanitize yeah, people. What a wonderful, wonderful yeah. thing to be able to do to 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 sit together and create, make something. It's got. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's. It's, it's sort of, you know, this this year has been a bit of the death of creativity a bit, hasn't it, I think? Yeah. It's definitely death of sort of real life collaboration anyway. I mean... Yeah. Have you guys felt more or less creative in this time? Because I remember speaking to some musician friends of mine near the, near the beginning of the year and saying, no one no one's writing any song. No one wants to write any songs because it's just... No. You would have thought all this sort of free time and interesting time for humanity and yet people are sort of not feeling it so has that been the case for I, you guys i think i think everyone is different uh like some people are we, we've always been a band that have built a lot of momentum through playing live and all the rest of it so it's been quite difficult uh adjusting um and like adapting but um i guess like bassie has been working on a, on his solo stuff so he he can do that like here and, um, and me and Al have been continuing to do this collaborations project, which we've done recently. So, so we have been doing sessions with um, a guy called Henry Green, who is uh, who's based in Malmesbury, which is a lovely part of the world, um, in the Cotswolds. So we, we've been there a couple of times this year, which has been really nice to get out of London. Say the name again, that's the most British sounding place I've ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> Malmesbury. Malmesbury. Yeah. Malmesbury. Is, Malmesbury. It, is it Malmesbury or is it Malmesbury? Uh, either well, way, it sounds like they make cricket bats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's in the Cotswolds. It's in Oxfordshire. It's, I thought it was Chippenham, wasn't it? Where is it? No. Oh. No. It's in Chippenham. Because when I was Chippenham, Malmesbury. Definitely Malmesbury. Um, and, uh, and that's been really lovely because 
because obviously we haven't been able to travel anywhere at all. So just getting out of London um, and doing that was really nice. Um, have you, have you, so apart from going to Canada, have you sort of been anywhere? Or have uh, you maybe no, been... I, came back, I came back to the UK to, uh, to see my family. Uh, oh, yeah. But that, again, very tricky situation because uh, again I isolated by my had to isolate by myself mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. in order to be able to just sort of socially distance see them but I wasn't going to let it go a year without seeing my family so yeah did you um, isolate on this side when you when you first came in there yeah did you for two weeks yeah so I had to do that because um my family were in Guernsey in the Channel Islands which I don't know if, if you've seen in the press but it's one of the only areas of the world currently well i don't know if that's right but it has from the beginning been one of the only areas that uh was covid free because they dealt with it pretty pretty smartly from the beginning so like along with new zealand and a couple of other places yeah. it, there was just no coronavirus there and everyone that was going in had to you know isolate for two weeks so i did that and then whilst everyone else in, in london was you know in lockdown or in the uk was in lockdown everything was back to normal in guernsey like clubs were open bars were open restaurants so that was that was like a parallel universe. It was extraordinary. It was sort of interesting to me at the beginning of this all. I thought, this is terrible and strange, but at least it's sort of one of the first unifor like it's sort of the same for everyone, no matter where you are in the world, uh, yeah. no matter what job you do, no matter how wealthy you are. It's, this is this is a very sort of interesting time, and to see the the kind of movements that sprung up out of the, this this time mm -hmm. in terms of unifying. I, I thought might be a sort of really interesting moment for yeah. humankind, but it, it is like you say, it's kind of interesting because it is, it's been handled so differently in, in, in different places. Well, I guess social media is bigger than it's ever been potentially because everyone's has to feel like they're connecting via the internet because they can't yeah. face to face. So then when you, when you read something in the news, it's a lot more impactful probably than, it would be when you're going about your day to day because life, you, because you've placed so much faith in in that m medium of receiving, mm -hmm. you know, information. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, I think hopefully next year there'll there'll be kind of a, a sense of euphoria amongst people again, and yeah, hopefully it does anyway. seem like we it does seem like people feel like we're turning a bit of a the corner the corner yeah. of optimism. I mean, I have. Personally, I just realised I didn't really answer that question. I, as Stevie said, I've been working here, and I haven't. I'm one of those people that hasn't. Um, I've obviously noticed it and felt, you know, the negative effects of it because of seeing how it affects people up around me. But personally, it hasn't affected my days that much because I'm usually just a hermit here anyway, just sort of tapping away. Um, yeah. But even though. On the other side, after a while, even though I've had more time to work, I would say it definitely has affected the creative process because you you realise how much you rely on sort of human inter human interaction. It's affected your human. creative libido. Creative libido is definitely affected. Yeah, needs some um, yeah <laughs> nourishment <laughs> remedy for that. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, it's it's got it's there is definitely some. In, Interest, you could look at some aspects of it in a positive light. Obviously, it's you know negative throughout. But for creative work, you could take away some positives. But generally, you know, even if you're on your own, having loads of time to do stuff because you don't have distractions, you still you still like you know humans need interaction and and you know sparking ideas between you and you, you know you need inspiration from others. And even if it's just like talking to your mates for a couple of days, you, you, you know, it can change your mood and then, I don't know, move you into that space. So at the beginning, I was like, yeah, I'm quite enjoying this, just on my own, no pressure, I can write. But I think the quality of the writing dipped quite a lot. I read a, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I read a quote the other day that said something, that, and I can't remember who had said it, but it was something like, the second biggest surprise of my life is, was ageing. The first biggest was realizing my deep and insatiable need for human connections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was so that was so interesting. Yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. Those things being the most important things in life. So, I don't know. I think we've all done a bit of we've all done a bit of 
prioritizing soul searching this year. Yeah. Really probably. Definitely, yeah. Well, it certainly makes you realize what you took for granted beforehand. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, your family and friends, and yeah, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Um, how, how, so, how much has uh, your life sort of changed on a day to day basis, and, and how have you tried to adapt? Well, I, I'm, I've been very used to over the last 15, 20 years of spending at least half of the year, at least, not at home. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've kind of relied on this job to satisfy me creatively, but also to take me off to, and on adventures. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've been very used to kind of going, right, you're leaving and you're going to go and live in Budapest now for six, seven months and you're leaving in a week or Bucharest or Canada or New Zealand or wherever it is. And for some reason, my, I, I'm always the guy who's cast right in the last minute. <laughs> so, you know, I always read about these people who say, yeah, well, I did two years of uh, training in the gym and then I did a year of capoeira and a year of mandolin training and then and then, yeah, and then we did some rehearsals for six months and then we started shooting. And I'm like, I got cast it not nine days before <laughs> started. Wow. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so. I was, I kept it for me. God, but, do some um, intense training in those intense, nine days. <laughs> I would have to do it, you know, uh, at the same time, just sort of bouncing around on horses and flailing swords around and learning how to shoot machine guns and, <laughs> yeah, but just sort of like between five and five fifteen, you know, just in, in the morning. Yeah. Um, well, ben, we um, I think we got a lot of questions. Well, we got some questions, but one of the most thought of that was on the YouTube, the premiere last night. Someone. Oh yeah, how did it go? Tell me, tell me about it. It was great. It was this good. is this is a new thing over lockdown as well. Like they this whole YouTube premiere thing, and it's been really exciting. So you can have a live chat. Uh, whilst whilst you're watching the video, so there was, was like a very intense four and a half minutes. <laughs> 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 yeah. I haven't um, seen it. So, I haven't seen it in so long. How did you go, How did you guys feel watching it? And uh, I was meant to ask you like how you felt that that felt that watching it, how, how it married with writing the song. So. Lyrically, I mean, this is one of the questions, wasn't it? I think, I think we um, we obviously had an idea of what we wanted the music video to be like, um, based on the on the lyrical content of the song. Um, yeah. I mean, Batty, can you explain the, what the song? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Put you on the spot there. Yeah. But he I just writes a to... load of indecipherable, indecipherable, ambiguous nonsense that hopes people think it's profound. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I can answer that, but it's weird that you're asking me in front of. I would have thought it'd be. A, I shoot. I think someone did ask. Someone did ask. Someone did ask. Okay. Um. Uh, it's so Soteria is like a it's goddess of forgiveness. I think Greek mythology, and it's. Um, it was quite a while ago actually we wrote this song, so I had to like think about it just now before we came on, remind myself what it was actually about. Um, <laughs> uh, but it was, I, you know, you go through life thinking, well, hopefully you do, thinking you're a good person and you, you do, you have good thoughts and you do good things. But if you make a wrong choice and you end up doing a bad deed, does that define you as a character? Like, how far can you go before you? are a bad person and um, mm-hmm. I think at the time I was watching The Sopranos at the same time and I was kind of imagining myself as Tony Soprano who's like, he has his own honour code and day to day he does a lot of bad deeds but he sees himself as like, because it's within his honour code, he sees himself as a good person and it's kind of like, is it all relative? And then on the other side, you know, someone like, I guess me, it's not all autobiographical, biographical at all but like say someone like me or one of us if we're thinking in our day-to-day life hopefully we're doing good deeds but you know occasionally we'll do a we'll do something bad that's hurt someone um and something that we regret like where's the line when do you objectively become a good or a bad person um and at the same and i think while i was watching the sopranos i also went to bhutan um the next girlfriend of mine um, which was an incredible experience, but like seriously, it's been a spiritual place where there's a lot of meditation and stuff. And, and I really, you know, those kind of questions were 
at the forefront of my mind at the time, I guess. And it was just, you know, one of those songs that we were working on at times, so the lyrics kind of reflected that headspace. Kind of, you know, if I make these bad, if I've hurt people along the way, will I be forgiven? Or, you know, I mean, it's a bit existential and it's a bit vague. Which is but, what music is usually about, existentialism. Yeah, and... yeah I mean, if that was very vague. I sort of, I, yeah, I, I have this, this theory that, well, not really theory, but something that I sort of quite often say, which is if a if a song or a or a or a film or a piece of art isn't uh, on some level about what are we doing here, yeah, it, it it it's 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 it, it. I mean, I think if you scratch away the surface layers of any piece of art, event it's eventually and essentially it will be a, what, about what are we doing here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting you say about that balance of that sort of grey area of human morality though because obviously I've spent like the last five years really or six years playing uh, characters who potentially on the surface are readable as villains or untrustworthy yeah. or uh, and and so your job in those situations is ultimately to, to to find what drives that person and to you know sort of peel away to find the most you know their motivations for acting in that way because people aren't like like uh, like you just like you just said with i don't think people are born bad mm -hmm. no, so people, no baby no baby is evil uh and and so so it's something that you learn and something that comes about because of certain motivations and so so to try to justify your you know i think people either know they're doing something wrong you know which is why we have feelings like guilt and shame kick in or, or or you or or you you feel justified in in your actions for some other reason and mm -hmm. sort of finding those gray areas is what's so interesting to me about playing characters who are sort of morally vague or morally gray yeah i think the um directors and makers of the film captured the way uh, the the point where you realized that gray area of of that you were becoming like a bad person and you you sort of came away from the job that you were doing Oh, in your in in the in, music video. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah, when when you see yourself when uh, the moment when you're robbing the bank and then there's a child who kind of goes stick him up with his toy. <laughs> yeah. and I see your. Well, that was kind of the, yeah. The, the the only two sort of things that I latched onto were obviously looked up so Taria and and found like what you s said obviously that goddess of deliverance or forgiveness yeah. and but those and 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 then and then the 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 sort of part in the brief about seeing it, the, his younger self and i thought those two things are really really interesting together because you always say to somebody you say forgive me or deliver me from evil or whatever it is yeah mm -hmm. you say it to someone so i always you know it's one of my things i was writing my script like who am i saying this to who am i saying this for and why am i saying this and so you know you think about things like that when you know when you've only got something like this which doesn't really have very many lines or anything uh, how can i ground it more specifically and i was uh, so when i read the lyrics of your song it's so interesting when art becomes when it stops being yours and starts being mine if i'm the one listening to it yeah i think uh, like, to answer your your initial initial question about how the music video um what it felt like watching it from us writing the song. Um, I guess we wanted something where uh, with, we, we spoke to the directors and we were actually quite involved with coming up with some of the ideas for this. Whereas often with videos, we kind of let the director go and take it in whatever they want, they, you know, which, whichever they, way they want to. But with this situation, the, the idea of like your younger self seeing you and, and, um, that kind of feeling of like, oh my God, have I, have I done everything I wanted to achieve or have I become the person that this person would be proud of? And that kind yeah, of that was, that was the moment for me that I think uh, I was talking about was, was that moment where he sees him and thinks if I could, it, what's rushing through my head in that moment is what, if I could go back, what would I t tell this kid to change? What, mm -hmm. what, what actually more specifically those inner demons of mine that voice that i listened to along the way which parts of that would i tell him not to listen to mm -hmm. that was how that was how i sort of read your lyrics to that song nice. yeah um nice, yeah and a fab job you did
And then I, I remember thinking like, well, I remember we, we were like, we really need someone, we really need a great actor to do this. And we had, we had obviously, uh, I think like the year before we'd yeah, met was, you. Yeah. We met in like 2016. Uh, I yeah. thought, uh, uh, did I, yeah, I, I, just, I just met you at one of your gigs, didn't I? Yeah, it was, it was at our show in uh, West Hollywood. Yeah. And I just remember that there wasn't that many people in in the room at the beginning and then people were just sort of filing in but I was just sort of, sort of standing at the front just like allowing this music to just like carry me off <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah I was a bit enchanted a bit did you enchanted. just randomly walk in as in you didn't know what it was going to be or anything? yeah somebody said oh there's some music happening in there and I just thought I really I'm really in the mood for some music. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I'm never not, but. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, but I just, I, it was like Siren, Siren song, because your music is so cinematic and, and yeah, it's like, like waves, like ocean waves a lot of the time, I feel. And, and, and I just remember just forgetting to breathe a bit, I think. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you. Have you ever played Odysseus, Ben? Sorry? Have you ever played Odysseus? No, I, I did see. I did see. Have, have you guys heard of the Broadway music at the moment, the Hades Town? I've heard of it. Right. It was on in London. It's absolutely brilliant. It's Persephone and Orpheus. Not Odysseus. It's Orpheus. Okay, <laughs> so that's completely wrong. But it's brilliant, anyway. <laughs> and the music's amazing. Okay, nice. Um, so yeah, I think I, I think after the show, like uh, it was that that whole experience in LA that week was 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 crazy at the time. I think we were taking it in our stride a little bit, but we now look back, and particularly in lockdown, you kind of look back at yeah. moments and you're like, what an amazing week that was. Like, yeah. We, mm -hmm. we played so this, wasn't it? Because because I saw the gig and we started chatting afterwards and had some beers and stuff. And then you came back through town, I think, like a week later, you'd gone off to play some other stuff, Austin or somewhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. We went and then the you came back and we ate pancakes. And, and then and then, and then he talked about... Um, and then eventually talked about doing that video, which is just like yeah. so indifferent. It was, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Ben, do you, you offer, we, should we look at some questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, um, we are, basically loads of people were asking questions on the YouTube yesterday on the chat. So then we said, we'll do an Instagram live. And then on our stories, we've um, said like, if anyone's got any questions, so should we read? And, and so, so we got some of that messages that came through earlier. And Stevie, if you, you could look at the ones. Yeah, yeah. Right? What's one. coming through? Yeah. Um, and some someone someone definitely asked um, yeah, yeah. if it was if it was you right riding the uh, motorcycle. Yes. Or whether you had a stuntman. Just me. Did you do the wheelie as well, though? No, I didn't do any of it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did you not? I, 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 I was pra I was practicing my acting just now. Oh. I, um... <laughs> <laughs> very, very good. You even convinced me, even yeah. though I knew that it was a stuntman. Yeah. I was like, oh, I thought it was a stuntman. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, um, I, I'll just, I'll give a because that answer was so boring. I'll give a, a part B, which is uh, when I was a kid, like five or six, I was obsessed with motorbikes, and I had a scrapbook, a blue page scrapbook, filled with pictures of motorbikes. Absolutely obsessed with them, and I've still never learned to ride one. Have you still got the scrapbook? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. It was uh, f 53 years ago. So. I, I remember, <laughs> I remember, I think I messaged you and I was like, oh, there's, um, there's going to be a motorbike scene in this. Like, are you a good ride? <laughs> motorcyclist? And then you were like, oh, I'll, I'll get my stuntman to do it. And I was like, okay, yeah, nice. <laughs> well, I did, no, it was definitely. It was just. Uh, oh, it was Ben's own stuntman. I didn't realise that. Yeah. I did it. No, it wasn't. It definitely wasn't. Oh, it wasn't your stuntman. It was someone else. No, I think it was just someone you guys. Oh, I've completely got that. Out. Some guy who could ride a bike. It would have been um, the guys who Kate Films then, wouldn't it? Probably. Yeah. That would have sorted it if it wasn't Ben's phone. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I've completely. I thought. I thought. I. Yeah. I mean, I guess that. Do you have Kate Films? Do you have a stuntman? I do. His a name professional is Professional Ben Barnes. His name's Jefferson Cox, and he's brilliant. And. Um, he uh, was training me a lot and did a lot of my like bike training and everything during the Punisher with me. Um, and then, uh, so we did both seasons of, of, of that together. And 
yeah, he's, uh, you're calling me up going, you're going to take any jobs with any action at all? Or <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, no, I'm actually doing, I'm actually going to do a BBC drama about a love affair with, a, with, an, with an older lady. He was like, right, anything that for me? I'm, I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I haven't yet. Because it's, it's all about um, his relationship with his stuntman. And oh, brilliant. Yeah. Brad Pitt is the stuntman. Oh, sorry. Yes, I have seen it. Of course I've, of course I've seen it. I, yes. just, I just wanted to ask if you have a similar relationship. Um, it, I, well, obviously not forged over quite as, as, as long a time. Uh, but um, it, yeah, I, I, I did text him the minute I came out of that film, though. Oh, did you? Nice. Yeah, I texted <laughs> Brad Pitt. <laughs> I text, no, I didn't text Brad Pitt. Um, uh, but, um, oh, God, is he brilliant in that film? Mm -hmm. And every film, he's just brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, right, should we ask some questions? Start another qu quite a few questions for you here, Ben. We're going to try, you know, we're going to, you know, um, hang on. I found, oh, I need to find the. Someone's just asked, Ben, will, will you release an album? Oh, putting you on the spot. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think this is spawned out of me just wanting to put something sort of uh, joyful into the world and, and sort of started to be a bit braver with since I, I got myself my uh, piano and stuff and just putting some covers, you know, some covers and stuff on Instagram. And I sort of started to think to myself, it'd be so great to... Because I think when you're doing acting as well, it's always, you know, it's always someone else's script or someone else's direction. And uh, I have, I have harboured... Um, dreams of of just making something completely myself and mm -hmm. offering it up into the world so it's definitely something that i am sort of that i would i'm gently gently working on i can so, confirm that ben has a beautiful voice i saw a instagram video of his earlier today it's beautiful it's, that's uh, that's official that's official now it's really <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's the cv that's man that's the singer of matt wolf so that's official now <laughs> no take no take back seats. <laughs> no, but I mean it's just nice when um because very often you know you have someone who's excellent in one field and then sometimes you're slightly worried, or it's a mate of yours, you're like you're like slightly worried, oh am I gonna like it? Is it gonna be good? And then it's excellent, you're like, oh thank goodness, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know I, do, I, really, I mean I, I, see, I, I definitely I, know I definitely know that feeling. Um, yeah. <laughs> People often say though, even when friends of mine sort of see that they don't, you don't look like you should be able to sing. I don't know what that means. Um, Why? Yeah. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so, did you grow? Did you did you grow up like singing as well, as well as acting? Actually, first music, yeah, singing first. I was sort of doing uh, in choirs and in musicals and things like that, and um, and I used to do Sinatra tribute concerts at school. Oh wow! Uh, there's like. I think my dad's got a DVD of me from about age 15 singing with a big band, singing Sinatra, oh, yes. not, not really. Oh, well, that, that should be released. No. Nope. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've, I've seen it. Uh, so, no. But, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's always, always... And then I had some sort of uh, dalliances with, with, with some pop music in my late teens, which the less said about it, the better. But... Um, uh, yeah, I've, I've sort of, I've done quite a lot of music in my films. Like I did a film called Jackie and Ryan where I played a street busker, um, sung some sort of like old, you know, Southern folk songs and stuff, which was just my favourite thing ever. And then I did a film called Killing Bono where I played a failed Irish 80s rock star. Um, so I've done quite a lot of music in my, in my films, but I, as I say, like, it, I, you know, what I'd like to work towards is doing, doing something that's just, just from me. Yeah, nice. Sweet. Who's got the next um, question? Okay, Stevie, we'll, you look at the same time. We'll see who comes up with. Uh, uh, okay, well, Alora Rickson says, any favourite moments while shooting the video? So we, Al and I, weren't there. Stevie and you, Ben, were there. Obviously, either of you got a favourite? Well, there was. I, I was only there for the bank robbing scenes. Uh, I wasn't there. Steve was on crowd control. <laughs> I tell you what, none of you were there for. None of you were there for the scene that we shot in the trailer, which we were supposed to be able to shoot in some trailer park somewhere, but we couldn't get there because one of the cars broke down or something. So we ended up shooting all the scenes in the trailer on the side of the motorway. Wow! No way. It's a freeway for you Americans watching, and um, and it was a broken down, and, and I had to catch a flight, and so we were like, we were sort of trying to decide what 
to Jeez. do. And we, eventually I was just like, look, we're going to have to, we're going to have to do the show right here. <laughs> and, uh, and we filmed it on the side of the motorway. We're just like, well, let's just shoot it here then. Um, just in the back of the van that you were driving. We were in a tra we were, we was shot in that, in that trailer that was supposed yes. to be in a trailer, but we were supposed to be, you know, parked off somewhere, but we just did it on the side of the motorway. Oh my God, that's amazing. Um, I didn't know that either. Yeah, I think my two favourite... Yeah, I, quite, I sort of quite enjoyed that because it was a time crunch and it felt very, like, pressured in a kind of interesting way. But the the entrance to the bank, and I I remember... I, I, at the time, I had a specific reference in my head of I remembered... I think it was the bank... One of the bank robberies in... One of the robberies in Heat where one of the characters just hops up on the... Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 on the on the on the uh, counter, and it's just sort of kicking stuff. And I was like, "Oh, it'd be cool to do it. To have it be a bit like that." Can I? Can That's I? Just jump up on, can I just jump up on this counter? And 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 the director was like, "No, we could try it." And I, I thought it was really cool that bit. Is that Tom Sizemore that does that? It might be. I can't. I can't, I can't remember. I can't, it might not even be Heat. I'm thinking about to be honest. Have you done? Yeah. A it was in Heat. It wasn't Heat. I'm just trying to think if it was uh, which of the guys. Were. I love that film. I love it. Movie. I've seen it so many times and yet can't remember if that's what I was referencing. But I, the fact that, yeah, the fact that the, the director was like, yeah, try it. And, I, and I, it was, it was, you know, it's a sort of moment somebody reached for a phone and I kicked it out of the way, one of those old phones. And I was <laughs> like, yeah, that, that was a cool moment. I think. Have, have, you, uh, have you done many music videos before? No, I don't know. I think this might, I'm going to embarrass myself now. But I think this is the only one. Great. Well, we somebody, somebody we down here, will, somebody down here will type. No, it wasn't. You did one. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I did do one. I did do one when I was very young, and I and I'm and I'm cut out. I was cut out of it. I did one for the Kooks. Oh wow! For one of their favourite songs of mine called the Sofa Song, and I got to oh, know yeah. them really well on that day. And it was, and I've met up with them a few times since. Uh, so I love their music. Um, I went to see them actually in New York when I was filming The Punisher. I went to went to watch them play and hang out with them. They were and it, there's one shot of me in the in in the video for the soap song, but it's but it's a still. But the the original idea was to have the band playing and then this whole sort of like sort of love story sort of interwoven through it. But so but we shot it all and then they and then didn't use it. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. So, so it's yeah, so those are the only two, and Neil's is the only one I'm actually in. Right. Wow. <laughs> Did you meet the kooks? Were they there? Yeah, he's, he said he hung out with them. Oh, yeah. right. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so we got no, it's actually very here. similar to, 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 to you guys. It's just, you know, just we've just sort of kept in touch through the years and just checked. Whenever in they're in town. It's really nice, yeah. I mean, we don't, yeah. Next music video will probably be at your door. <laughs> 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 Feel free to say no. You, you know, brought in your. Uh... You told us uh, last night that you just found out that your housemate is um is a is a fan of ours. Did he? Has he seen the video now? He's she seen the video now? Um, I don't know. I don't know if. Uh, uh, yeah, probably. I probably made him watch it when it when we made it. Um, but um, no, I was just saying that I was going to come on and chat to you guys about this and telling you about your video release woes and he. And he was like, well, that's, well, that's stupid. They're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> They're amazing. They're seriously amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. So, big fan. Love that. Yeah. So, so we got a question from Mentally Married to Loki. Oh, yeah. Um, I think this is aimed at us. Uh, this will be, be, be good. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. I can confirm it is good. And I don't know how the answer is going to be yet, so I'm just rolling with it. But what inspired you to... No, that's the wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> it, it was the same person, though. Would you ever consider writing an emotional song about a dog or any other animal? Um, yeah. And the answer, if, well, if I'm going to answer it, would be yes, absolutely. <laughs> ben, so, would you ever yeah. write a song about a dog? No. <laughs> <laughs> My caveat would be, though, that it would... Because Sebasti uh, and the band Matt Wolf would already have done it. Well, <laughs> you could beat us to it, then. And it would look like I was, like was plagiarising. The thing is, what I'd say is you would have to do it so you, you wouldn't want to make it obvious that you're writing 
about the dog. You have to like um, make it seem like an ex-girlfriend. Yeah, or like seem like some other kind of love. You have to be very really, careful you know, with that. You know, deep down, that you're talking about your dog and the, the jokes on everyone else because they think it's about it's some really depressing song about you. You, you find a way of flipping it so you, you know, know what I'm feeling inside. About, you no know, one else actually knows. The labyrinth song, Jealous. Yeah, yeah. Was uh -huh. the, I, I ended up, I, I was covering that the other day um, on Instagram and, and, then I, and then I was sort of reading about it because I just assumed it was a sort of romantic ex-girlfriend song is what it feels like. But I was reading that actually his inspiration for it was about his dad leaving when he was oh. young and being jealous of that time not spent together. But then... But then when, when he's sort of working with the producers on the song, they kind of were trying to make it a bit more universal so it sounds a bit more romantic and like it might be about a woman. But I, lo I think that stuff is so interesting. Yeah. I, funnily enough, I watched an X Factor. It was like the most emotional moments on the X Factor. <laughs> like YouTube video. I think me and my girlfriend were watching it. And uh, <laughs> don't, don't, ask don't ask me why. Don't ask me why. But... Um, this, this song came up, Jealous, and the guy said that he was singing it in such a way about his friend who had just passed away. Um, so he was kind of putting a new meaning on it. And Simon Cowell ended up crying. Um, wow. Yeah, so context is everything, isn't it? Yeah. And it, it gives it certain things, which is why when you're acting and stuff, you want to feel, even if it's nothing to do with the script, you want to have something really specific in your head because people feel that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody just wrote, somebody wrote, <laughs> I don't look down at these comments, but somebody wrote, um, Jealous by Labyrinth is actually about a spoodle. <laughs> <laughs> it was about a dog. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a really good comment. Nice. <laughs> nice. Brilliant. We've come full circle. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any... Excuse me, is it easy to see the question? I'm seeing, I'm seeing the question, sir. Simon Cowell crying is featuring, to be honest. Um, yeah. My mum just said hello. That's nice. She's Hi, Lynn. <laughs> Hi, mum. <laughs> oh, your mum. Oh, I thought someone was just there. Tonight. I can't. Do you, Hi, have any, do you have any other screenshots? Um, There's not, no one asking questions. I have you? got actually. Someone said that your hair looks good, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I've actually got a message from. I did actually cut it myself. <laughs> <laughs> you did? Yeah, I did it at about three o'clock in the morning. Uh, nice. Lockdown cut. Our sure friend, I... Foxy, um, who we have, Alan and I actually stayed with in LA. <coughs> oh, Tom Fox Davies. Yeah. Yep. He's messaged asking, um, did you know, and I don't know if he's winding us up here or not, because I don't know this, did you know that Ben nearly wrecked UK and Eurovision? Is this true? I can neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> oh, okay. That means it's true. Wow. Brilliant. <laughs> any... I'll tell you what, whether any it's true or not. Whether it's true or not, it's bloody embarrassing, isn't it? No, I'm not so no, I think, I think. Oh no, it's only embarrassing if it is true. <laughs> <laughs> I've given away the answer there, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> Look at Daddy, or whatever his name is. The the is it Icelandic guy? Daddy. Daddy. Wait, is so Icelandic? what's the story then? Are you? The story you was, I was in a pop band for about two weeks when I was nineteen or so, and. Um, they, they, we, the only thing we did was we had one song and, and then they entered it for the Eurovision to represent the UK, but we didn't win. So, um, thankfully, and the day after we, the day after we performed it, the song, I, I quit because I was too embarrassed. <laughs> Were there dance moves? Yeah. Is there footage? <laughs> Do you remember the dance moves? <laughs> there are dance moves. There are, there is footage. And <laughs> there is footage. Oh my god, it's on YouTube. Go and look it up so long as I don't have to be there or look it up. <laughs> Just do whatever you want. I'm gonna I'm gonna search on the on the internet Ben Barnes boy band after this. Well, you're gonna have a lovely time. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, was this was this before uh you done like Prince Caspian and everything? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Years Were you before. like how how old were you at that point? Well, I guess you don't want to. When I did Caspian. Yeah, was it quite early in your career? Well, I guess I'm guessing it was. Four, twenty-four, twenty-five. So, we had you kind of moved out to LA like after just after being in the boy band, or was this all in London? No, no, no. The 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 the, the 
pop band stuff was way earlier. Um, and then I was in London for doing plays and um, little movies. I did a movie called Stardust. Um, yeah. It was a big movie, but a small part. And then some other little movies and and some plays um, before that the Narnia stuff came along. Ricky Gervais, how was, did you meet Ricky Gervais in Stardust? I didn't meet him on Stardust, but I did meet him at a David Bowie concert. Oh, he was wow. sitting next oh, wow. to me. He was sitting next to me. Um, and I spent the entire concert staring at him, loving Bowie so much, because he's his uh, number one fan, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But I, the office was on TV at the time. Oh, like, wow. On, oh, wow. On BBC and you're TV. watching David Bowie. I mean, what? <laughs> I, was, yeah, I was trying to do, do both. Uh, it, was just, it was too much for me. That's crazy. It's too much. That's crazy. I don't, and I don't remember what I said, but I think I made some stupid joke about my uni bar. <laughs> but I made him, I, I, all I remember is I made him laugh once and that was enough for me. <laughs> That's, enough. That's great. You die happy now, Ben. You die yeah, happy. Yeah, exactly. Ricky Gervais laugh. Um, any more good any questions there? No, do you have the biggest questions? Uh, well, we've actually answered quite a lot of them, actually. Um, a lot of them are sort of like, what was it like to work with each other? Obviously, it was wonderful. Oh, someone's just asked, Ben, what's your favourite current song? And you're not allowed to say Soteria. My favourite? What's current. your favourite current song? Putting you on the spot here. Yeah? yeah, really, it really is. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what have I been listening to? Okay, what's an all-time classic? Um, yeah, it's funny. I don't know quite how I, 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 I've, I've, I've got a book. I won't answer that question. I'll answer a different one. I've got a book <laughs> on my, <laughs> on my uh, piano, which, because I can't really read music or anything, so I just have to sort of like figure out chords and then write down G minor. Um, and uh, so I've got a book where I take songs. It's essentially a really snazzy karaoke book where I just take songs and I don't know quite how I get to them. I think some of them are just my all time favorite songs, you know, Donny Hathaway and Stevie Wonder and things like that, which I just naturally gravitate towards that kind of music. But then like, I, I tend to find artists to have a bit of that feel. Mm -hmm. um, Apple Music obviously just suggests me People like Alan Stone and people like that who who are kind of very like soulful, um, uh, and and so I just I just I just uh, find all these songs and it's peppered with the book is peppered with uh, some Christmas songs and and uh, I tell you what I'm listening to I um I was, uh, Daniel Caesar oh yeah yeah a lot, of, a lot of his songs at the moment I've had on on repeat this year. I don't know. Had, uh, little, um, Christmas song cover this year, this this festive season. I usually do do one. I've done done one every year for the last five. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have to find one. But um, I was really pleased with last year. So I don't know. I'm a bit worried. I'm gonna. What did you do last year? Five. Um, I did the Nat King Cole Christmas song. Nice. Got the nice. best one. Nice. So I've peaked. <laughs> what are you guys going to do a, why don't you do a Christmas song well, I challenge you to do, interesting to, you say that to release an Instagram <laughs> Christmas song I've made one actually but um, it's not on that so I have a um, publishing deal separately where I write um, 10 songs in the year for uh, downtown publishing and, I, and the last one they asked for was a so the cover of Deck the Halls um, oh cool so I don't think it'll be a Mount Wolf release, but um, <laughs> it'll be out there. Hopefully you'll see it on like an advert or a trailer or something. I offered to play Jingle Bells in it, but you wouldn't let me. <laughs> it's just like, oh, it? <laughs> it's just not that um, did, you, did, did you offer to play it on, just on some Jingle Bells? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. He says he offered. He came here today and heard it for the first time. <laughs> after it's not. Percussionist. <laughs> 
Um, I know what this means. <laughs> Amber 98. Asks, More cowbell. If you could pick three countries or states or cities to perform, which three would it be? Ben Barnes, go. Oh, um, we'll answer afterwards, I think. Will we? Uh, London. Yep. Sorry? Uh, London. London, okay. Uh, maybe Sydney? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Only because I was supposed to do a show at the Royal Opera House about Ooh. 20 years ago, uh, a musical, and it, and then it never happened. So I will be in my bonnet about it. And um, and um, yeah, maybe LA somewhere so I could be outside. Nice. Mm. You guys, do you want to answer? There's something like, called Red like Rocks. Sorry? Sorry, I just said all like Red Rocks or something like that would be cool too. Yeah, where is Red Rocks? Um. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's in, I, I always listen to the, uh, I've got a few live albums of people from, from, from Red Rocks, but I'm not exactly sure where it is actually. No, I don't know either. I've seen quite a few live, sort of, like a lot of live footage from Red Rocks. A lot Rocks. of that stuff is in Arizona and Utah and places like that, so I'm not exactly sure where, where the... I'm sure someone will tell us in the comments. Yeah. I mean, I think I think like, I remember I was a big Incubus fan when I was a kid, and I remember they did like a live performance there. And then I remember as a kid thinking, "Wow, that looks really cool." And, yeah, um, Mumford, so I've always wanted to play there. I don't know where it is. One, which is super cool. <laughs> Sorry, Mumford and Sons did one there, which was really cool. Oh, oh right, nice. Video of it. I, think I think it makes it in Colorado. In Colorado. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I'd love to play a gig in a. In like a Roman amphitheatre, oh, like uh, yeah. in Italy or something uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. That'd be cool. I think. I think. I, I think during lockdown with my dad, I was watching some Pink Floyd footage playing at like an amphitheatre in in, really? uh, in Italy um, somewhere. Yeah. I think. I think a bottle of wine. I think. When, yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> with your dad. I think when you're Floyd. when you're in a band, uh, you always love the idea of just playing in front of. Uh, like a stadium or something, like loads and loads of people. Like I guess the pyramid yeah. stage, Glastonbury or something like that. Yeah. yeah um, cool. But um, an amphitheatre is where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got a question here from Takaya Tachenko. I'm sorry, I hope. Hi, Takaya. Right. Um, best imp inspiration you can find in the UK. Um, what is in a place? I guess so. I mean, I, I, th I mean, inspiration-wise, books. I mean, are the obvious answers. Day, your, your life. Always try and look in your own life first, and then if that fails, we you know look at books, movies. I mean, you know, we've always got a lot of inspiration from like landscapes and uh, like the sea and open spaces and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think when we when we have when we wrote Etherlight, for instance, we would often go to a remote area of the UK and kind of the countryside, um, and sort of just play in a studio for a while. And it just it's just nice to get out of London uh, to 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 do that. Um, so yeah, I guess like openness. Shout out to Ross at Melton Mowbray. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're watching yeah. Ross, <laughs> probably not, but yeah. I love you, Ross. Might, might be. Um, what's Ben's and Mount Wolf's favourite foods? Oh, Ben, you go first if you're ready. Probably Indian Indian food. Yeah. Have you ever had a, a dishoom? Yes. Oh, yeah. I love mm. Dishoom and a cold beer. It's just, that's that's difficult. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys what's your favourite favourite food? If, if I was to pick one, it, it would be a really good mac and cheese. Oh wow! It would it, It's mm. got to be a good one though. It can't be a stodgy one. Yeah. It's got to be gloopy, you know. For the group, um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for a boring one, but Italian food. I think in Italy, um, I, I could happily live off Italian food forever. Yeah, I was going to say, should we get some carbonara? Is hard to beat as well, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. But we do currently have um, a dishoom on uh, delivery. Uh, it's quite near near our house. Me and my girlfriend. So well, it's um, on the we way think... now. Sorry. It's on the way now. 
<laughs> not on the way. Oh, not on the way now. But it, oh, could, we, uh, be, it could be. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we have to shoot here. But yeah, we do in London. But as in, like in this area, King's Cross is probably the closest. Oh, uh, okay. But um, it's not like it's like off the road. So we've been living off to shoot. Uh, this, is the, this, this is the kind of content they're tuning in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it could be here in uh, 14 minutes. We, don't know. we could be talking to ourselves. I mean, Al, can you see? Is anyone there? We can't see the, see the screen. Or Ben, you tell us. Yeah, there's, some, there's some people watching. Okay. For sure, there's some people watching. Okay. Um, please invite Ben for a feature and a song next time. Ooh. Okay. Uh, do you fancy doing some vocals, Ben? At some yeah. point? Nice. Yes. Um, sick. Um, I always think you guys should do. Um, I've always, I've always harbored, harbored um, a dream of of of. Uh, I remember when we were shooting the video. I was saying to Seb, I, I was saying, uh, oh, I was saying to Stevie, I was saying, uh, you guys can pay me back by scoring a film at some point because I think I, I just think you'll. Yes. I think you'd be so brilliant at that. Mate, definitely. I'd love to. I've been doing a lot of scoring this this year, actually. Have you? Yeah, um, and we'll all apply our minds to it together, and for sure, yeah, for sure. That's that's it. When you're saying you couldn't read music, I, it's not. I, I wouldn't. Um, it's not a necessity. But when you get into like scoring and stuff, I think the, the, that's when I've now recently actually. I've been a musician for a long time, but I never really looked had had a classical background. I learned guitar and stuff. You don't necessarily need to learn to read, but when you're learning scoring, it is. I'm I'm sort of learning quite late in my career to sort of read and write music because of the scoring things. So because you know there are certain things like intervals and whatnot that it is useful for that. But for for you know writing songs and stuff, it's not it's not not essential it can help yeah i think um, i think it's really important to just use your ear a lot of the time yeah um because for instance like playing the guitar uh i often don't know what i'm playing like i'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, as in, like, I'll play I'll, 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 I'll play in a weird tuning so i've got no idea like what chord it is that sounds i'm playing like and, then, and then you're like well that sounds really nice and but then you know i'm like good, yeah. what chord is that Bassi? and then we kind of like work it out and it's like some weird chord because if you ever learned guitar you play like c and g and and like a lot of bands have made incredible songs using a lot of basic chords but but then after a while you're like oh i don't really know what i can do here so it's quite nice not knowing what you're doing actually yeah um yeah yeah or, or it's just you find different inversions and they are actually it is just the g major maybe with like a seventh or something but it's because stevie's playing in a different tuning it sounds fresh and but if you were classically trained, very often what happens is a lot, a lot of classically trained musicians think, no, that's too simple, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. And then they go down to too tangential and the, and the music isn't very relatable to people. So very often us dullards that don't know much music theory, <laughs> it, plays to our, it plays to our strengths because we're not trying to be too clever because we don't know what, you know, what else is out there. <laughs> so it's not necessarily a bad thing if you don't read music for writing like yeah, pop songs or you know songs in that sort of world. So, just have to find someone brilliant to orchestrate the strings for you. Well, yeah, I mean we we have we have we have uh, often worked with kind of string quartets and um, things like that when we played live as well. Yeah, um, they're great days in the studio actually when the when the strings are recording. Yeah. It's always quite nice to sit in the control booth and yeah watch them do their thing. Um, so I guess we so we've been chatting for like nearly an hour now, an hour now actually. So as as kind of like wrapping up thoughts, what what have you um? What, what have you taken away from this hour? What's your review? What you learn? Yeah, what you learn? To summarize this. <laughs> um, what what kind of things do you uh, hope to be working on next year and and uh, have got coming up? I, I guess um, if you can talk about them. Well, no, it's it just it's a strange old year, and and I'm involved with a with a TV show, so um, obviously, hopefully, that's going to come out at some point soon. Um, don't know when, um, and then see if if we'll go back and make some more because it's based on some books, um, uh, which get really exciting as you go through. So um, that would be cool to see, and then. Uh, 
I'm sort of always just interested to balance it out with whatever I'm not, with whatever I'm not working on. So probably just at something not, you know, not sort of fantasy and not potentially villainous and, you know, just something, just, just something to balance, you know, just something to balance it out. So I'm just always, I just get, I don't really get excited about the idea of um, doing something specific until I'm reading it and it's, and it's making me, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's sort of, feels like a catalyst for something exciting. Would you be interested in directing at any point? I, w I would, uh, I, I definitely would, um, you know, and I've, I've, I've written some, some stuff in the past as well, but I think, um, like I say, if I'm gonna do something that's sort of a project of my own, I might like, might like it to be more music based maybe. Okay, yeah. Cool, well let's do a duet then, as in vocal, Hopefully. but with all of us. Yeah, um, um, cool. that's a, that's not a duet anymore. If they're involved, no. So that's <laughs> a duet. We'll play some music. <laughs> I just remember someone asked you were talking about books. What's your favourite book? Sorry, I don't remember the name of who asked it. But what's your favourite book, Ben? You don't remember the name of your favourite book? No, I'm asking you. <laughs> the person that asked. I don't remember their name. I... Oh, it's, I just find it's important. I did an English degree. It's impo almost impossible to pick one, I think. Um, yeah, I, I, I find that very difficult. Yeah, to... it's, not, it's not saying your favourite album or favourite film. I post, yeah, I posted some lists before of stuff, uh, you know, sort of some of my favourite stuff before. Uh, but it's, it's, yeah, it's very difficult to compare, like, Bit of a cop-out answer then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, atonement. No, okay. Ian McEwen Atonement is, 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 a, okay. is, is right up there. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I've only read one Ian McEwen uh, book. What's your favourite book, Martin? Oh. Well, I'm on a non-fiction uh -huh. vibe at the moment. Yeah. Um, Shantaram for fiction is pretty high up. Oh, yeah. Shantaram is wonderful. Um, I'm reading a lot of Murakami at the moment, but... I'm always a bit hesitant to recommend him because the more I read of him, the more uh, there's a lot of sort of problematic male character. Have you ever read any Murakami? Actually, my friend just gave me some, she's done some short stories, which I've just, my friend just gave me to read here. Yeah, yeah he's, he's such a good writer, but he has a very male-centric um, view Gaze, of the world yeah. and some descriptions. I don't know, it's getting a bit weird. Uh, yeah, well, so long as you acknowledge it, I think that's the... Make yeah, sense. maybe. Just makes you a little bit uncomfortable. Like, he's an amazing writer, but it does make you feel a bit uncomfortable. Like, I'm not sure, like, what's going through his mind here. Like, I, I don't know. But um, that it wasn't me answering that. It was supposed to be Ben answering that question. <laughs> <laughs> is there a sunny day in LA today? It looks sunny. It is a sunny the... day. It is a sunny day, and I'm going to have to go out and get in it, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go and do nice. a bit of exercise for the day or something. Have a little walk around. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, but, Lovely to talk to you guys. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thanks so much. much great to see you guys. Jumping on, man. And hopefully, chat again soon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wicked. We'll, uh... Lots of love. Yes, yeah, well, I do. Take thanks, care. Man. See ya. Right. Do you, oh, you do it from there, don't you? Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah. Um, we are now going to try and save this so people how, can watch it back. How do you do that? Um, well, I think we're going to have to end. So, thank you very much, guys. But wait, if you end it, do you lose the thing? If you... Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Have a great day. No, I think I think it gives you a choice. End. <laughs>